What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be going over that amazing, amazing elimination final win against the West Coast Eagles. Um, my voice is a little bit off. <laughs> Barely got any voice, but let's just run that intro, jump straight into it. So just before we do jump straight into it, formalities, obviously, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and um, Twitch, I have Crash Bandicoot, I've actually got my Xbox ready to go streaming, I will be streaming tonight, Sunday tonight, the Crash Bandicoot game, my favourite, absolute favourite game, but that's for, you know, Twitch Luke, so that's there, that's all done, formalities are done. Also, quick shout out to my boys in the Carlton Draft. They sent me a bunch of t-shirts. I gave some away. This one's my favorite one, Bucks Party. You can see, I don't know how good this video is, but you can see Buckley at the back. It's good, good t-shirts. So shout out to my boys at Carlton Draft. Go check them out, amazing. But anyway, let's get into this game. We got there. We fucking did it. We absolutely fucking did it. <laughs> we fucking did it! We fucking did it! Fuck yeah! So as you just saw, I don't think uh, any, I don't think there was a dry eye left uh, across Victoria with uh, Collingwood supporters, and or, or just across Australia with Collingwood supporters. That was a win for the ages. Um, I don't have to say it, but everyone just knocking us down, backs against the wall, dirty pies, cane corns, that absolute flog. We're just making up the numbers. Come on, man. Come on. We're the pies. We don't fucking make up numbers, you know. This is the stuff that we do. It was just, it was just a great backs against the wall um, performance. Let's go through the game a little bit. That first quarter, Cox absolutely smashed it. Three goals, clunking all the marks. You'd think with that he would have, he should have kicked six or seven. But the Eagles tied in a tied it. Um, the, the, the screws on him a little bit. Sometimes, you know, double teaming him and stuff like that. So he wasn't always going to kick four, five, six, or seven. But that first quarter just set us up. The shades of the 2018 prelim um, with his performance that I absolutely loved. Um, and then the Eagles kicked four in that second quarter. Then you think, shit, they're coming back. And then it was neck and neck all through the third and all through the fourth. But for just some absolute heroics in that last quarter, mainly that Taylor Adams smother was absolutely... Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I just can't it's just oh, it's just amazing. it's just amazing. Like I don't know what I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm literally lost for words. Usually I know a, a lot of what I'm going to say, but it's just I'm lost for words at this performance. And you know, it comes on the back of just being able to, you know, take the game on. Take the game on like we did against Carlton. We were doing it against um the Eagles last night, playing out of the back, dashing, that dare that we haven't had all season. We've been very defensive all season. And now we have this dash. Now we have this dare. We're going through the center. You know, sometimes it doesn't work off. That's fine. But it's high risk for high reward if you go through that center. But, you know, Isaac, Johnny Noble, um, Crisp as well, Maynard, they were just all providing us off that defensive line, providing us into that into that 50. And then obviously our midfielders had, you know, a phenomenal go at it as, as well. But, you know, Going up against Nick Nat and the midfield was always going to be tough. And we and that showed. We, that showed. That showed. They brought in Darcy Cameron to tag team. Nick Nat, there were some times where you just go, oh, Darcy Cameron at starting starting the third quarter, starting the fourth quarter, while Grundy's on the bench against Nick Nat, and then Grundy gets, uh, sorry, and then Nick Nat gets the tap. They get the clearance. Nick Nat had five clearances, or, or, or probably a little bit more, out of, the, out of the center because of his own tap work. And I think they kicked five or six goals from the center. From Nick Nat's tap work. That's incredible. You could put three, four guys on him. He's still going to win. But I like what they were doing. They were kind of wearing him out. And once he has a bit of knocks on him, Grundy comes in fresh and uh, goes over the top. That worked. Nervous. It left us all nervous. But it did work, especially that last, um, after that last goal with a minute and a half left. They still persisted with Darcy Cameron in there. Crazy, but Bucks is a crazy bastard, and it absolutely worked. I can't, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. So some positives I already said. Mason Cox, absolute beast in that first quarter. Three goals. Uh, who asked my check? Three goals. Kicked, the, kicked 
the sealer. Well, he not pretty much. He did kick the sealer in that last quarter. Took a great mark, and he was a presence up forward. Another positive. Just that I got. To, I have to reiterate that ball movement was just quick, dashing, daring, and the mid to forward connection was actually working most times. Most times it was working. We weren't as effective. I think we ran at about 43% efficiency um, with shots to inside 50s. I think we had 18 shots to 42, 43 inside 50s. But look, I'm not too fussed about that only because McGovern and Barras and Hearn, they're always going to mark those high balls. Sure, we could play not to their strengths, but it's Collingwood. We usually play to other teams' strengths. But I'm not too fussed about that because we... You know, for every one um, one inside 50 that McGovern marked or Hearn marked or, or Barras marked, we went to the next inside 50, uh, lower balls, shorter balls, more direct uh, balls into the, into, obviously into the 50, and we generated that run in there, and it was great. Um, the po biggest positive is a win against, uh, well, again, I was just about to say against Perth. It was a win against Perth. It was a win against Western Australia. It was a win against those goddamn Eagles that have just been giving it to us for the last few years, you know? Um, with all their 35,000 Eagles fans, with their big, flashy stadium, with all their lights and all their red-hot chili peppers and whoever else they were playing through the speakers, you know? Um, a win against the WA media. Just a win against the AFL. Everyone counted us out, and that was the best positive um, from this game. So some negatives... When there's a game like this or a game that we win, there's usually not a, a lot of negatives, but there are a couple of negatives, stuff that we can tighten up on. Um, the back line, although good throughout the rest of the season, uh, they just let Josh Kennedy and Jack Daly get away from him. Roughhead, imagine, and sometimes Darcy Moore, but pretty much roughhead, imagine, just let them um, get the better of them. They were clunking him left, right, and center, and you know, they they nearly beat us because of it, um, but that's some stuff that can be tightened up. Not a lot of teams have a Kennedy, Darling, Ryan trio that's going to give you headaches like West Coast did um, yesterday. Another negative is Brody Grundy is a shadow of his former self. Maybe he's carrying an injury, but you know that's why they brought Darcy Cameron in. Thankfully for Grundy, what works in his favor is that no one, no Ruckman in the rest of the six teams Six teams? Two, four, six. With the rest of the five teams, because we're the sixth team, is as good as Nick Nat. And next week we go up against... Um, does Blissarves play in the Ruck? I don't think so. And um, Ray Stanley from Geelong. So, not the Nick Nat, not the Max Gorn, not the Goldstein type. So that could work in his favour. And, you know, not that he had a super bad game, but he was... Just lowered his colours a little bit. But you're always going to get your colours lowered when you go up against Nick now. Another thing we have to work on is our centre clearances. If Grundy's not winning the ball, we shark their um, their Ruckman. So we, we look for where Stanley is going to put the ball down to, you know, Southwood, Dangerfield's uh, throat and stuff like that. We need to get those centre clearances because we I think we only scored one goal from centre clearances yesterday. And like I said before, West Coast scored five or six goals from centre clearances. So you can see how important it is to get those center clearances. Like I, like I said in my uh, preview video, if you can just grab the ball and just kick along into your forward 50, one, that's a center clearance. Two, you're giving your forwards the best opportunity because it's six on six. It's not eight on eight or 10 on 10 or 12 on, on 12 in, that, um, in your forward line. And it's going to be the best opportunity for you to score goals. That's why they scored five or six goals from center clearances uh, yesterday. Another dislike that I do have though is this umpiring is absolutely shocking now. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know if they were, you know, because of the Perth crowd and stuff like that, but it was absolutely shit ass. This against um, Josh Thomas should have been a mark or it should have been called a free kick. Special mentions, Taylor Adams, Levi Greenwood, and Jack Crisp. They ha each had eight tackles. 24 tackles they had. It, absolutely incredible. Another special mention to Levi Greenwood for just... Putting the clamps on Tim Kelly, I love Greenwood as a tagger, and we're finally using him as a tagger again. There's been times where we just use him as an out and out midfielder, now we're using him as a tagger, and I dare say that he goes on to, you'd think, Dangerfield um, when, when we verse Geelong next week. 
Also, a quick shout-out to Chris Main. Went at 90% disposal efficiency with 18 touches of the ball. Incredible. He, I love... He's made for finals, Chris Main, and he bleeds black and white. will do absolutely anything for the club. And, of course, Scott Penelbury, six clearances. And I can just go on and name everyone because everyone did amazing. Also, also especially, Johnny Noble. That goal that he kicked. Ah, oh, so good. So, so, so good. Another special mention goes to Brody Majacek. Yes, okay, he kicked those goals. Awesome. But... When he had to, he went down back as a loose man and took a great intercept mark in that last quarter that stopped a, a certain uh, West Coast shot at goal. Also in saying that, Darcy Cameron, not for his ruck work, but for the way he can take a good mark and, again, stop West Coast uh, attack. So I'm going to read a couple of questions from Instagram, as always. So we're going to start here. Has the Pigs' brilliant tagging role on Kelly just secured him a contract for next year? Yeah, so Greenwood's out of contract. And if we use Greenwood in that tagging role, 100% he's got another contract. Even if it's just a one-year contract extension, I think Greenwood is still in the black and white next year. I, I, like I said before, I love how he goes about it. Do you think that after that win, it's given us a spark to make a mem memorable finals run? Yes. Like I said last week, whoever wins this game, West Coast or Collingwood, it will go a long way because it was always going to be a hard game, right? And we're on the good side of the draw. We play Geelong, and then if we beat Geelong, we play Brisbane. So it's not too bad. I feel it in my gut. I feel really good about it. Do we go with the two Ruckman against Geelong? Could be slippery there at night. Yeah, so classic Gabber at night. I don't think we play four tools or four or five tools uh, next week against Geelong. I think we will drop Darcy Cameron because, like I said before, we don't need a double team um, Reece Stanley. I think we'll bring in... Someone like a Callum Brown. Do you think Steve-O played well considering he didn't kick a goal on the way he played? I should have mentioned him in the special mentions. I love how Steve-O went about it. Didn't drop his head, kept that pressure up. 70% uh, disposal efficiency, over 350 metres gain. Four inside 50, so he's creating chances. Yes, he didn't kick a goal, but he's creating chances. And it's more than he has done in the last couple of weeks, so I love that for him. So just another question. Do you think this was the best game of 2020 margin and high scoring for 2020 standards? I think it was... One of the best games of um, 2020. I don't watch all the games, obviously. I watch all the Collingwood games, but not all the games. But I think this was probably the best Collingwood game in the sense that not that we smashed the team by 50 points or whatever and we could just chill, chill but it was a, a great game in the sense that we just fought back against adversity. And I know that's a big word, adversity. You don't really use it in football context, but that's exactly what we were, were facing, adversity from the WA media and the AFL media. So yes, it was a great game. So thank you all. That just answered some questions. Thank you all for submitting it. What a crazy, 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 crazy game. We've won it. Like I keep saying, this is going to go a long way into next week against Geelong. It's a different beast. We're not the same team now than we were when we versed Geelong. Um, what was it? Like, round seven or, or eight before that round nine West Coast game. We're a different team now, and so are they. They might be without Joel Selwood. They're a bit frazzled after, you know, getting done by Port Adelaide. I think they're very beatable. But in saying that, it is going to be a bit of a nervy week. Let's just... Enjoy this win, and then tomorrow we'll focus on if we're confident against Geelong. But until then, thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching here, leave a swoop down below. You know how it goes. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll swoop you later. Ooh la la.